Hi, this is Lori from Shoe Shoe Paper Art, and I'm sharing an idea for those little tiny mini flower stamps on your clear stamp sets. I thought it might be fun to create um, some little panels on cards, and it turns out that it works really well. I really like how this looks. Um, I'm going to share a few tips on how to do that and how to make it easier. Um, Let's start with this card right here. I wanted to share just a couple little tips on how um, to do the arched top on this card. So let's get started. All right, so this card started with this old wooden stamp that I have that has these two little bunnies. I'm not even sure where this came from. Uh, the only identifying marks are it says PSX and Petaluma, California and a D780. So I'm not even sure where this came from. I know that I've had it for quite some time, but I've never used it. So I've been trying to use some of my older things and this is um, a good place to start. I think it's a very cool stamp. It looks really cool when it's colored. I really like it. So um, that was kind of a fun thing to do. Um, the stamp, as you can see, has an arch and that kind of led to the idea of making the card the same shape. So I started out with um, a panel that would be just big enough to accommodate the stamp. And then I used one of the circles from Nesting Circles, uh, We Are Memory Keepers dies to help me create this card. So the trick here is that you need the um, panel of cardstock to slip into your circle. So your circle needs to be big enough to accommodate the strip. I've got it anchored down here on back in on the back with some tape. And then when you run it through your big shot, you want to stop your your uh, big shot before this bottom part of the circle runs into it and cuts as well. You only want this top part to cut. So when you do that and run it through, you're going to end up with a panel that looks like this. Okay. An another thing I had to figure out because I haven't worked with wooden stamps in so long was how in the heck to get this where I want it on the panel. And um, so what I came up with is I marked um, the center line here on this stamp to help me uh, guide it. And then I looked at the back and decided, okay, you know, that's, that's a pretty good margin right there. I don't think I need to adjust it up or down. That would be enough of the white cardstock to show above. So then I just measured um, this stamp, the wooden part, and it is almost an inch and a half. Now yeah, it is about an inch and a half. So I'm going to measure down from the top of the arch an inch and a half and make a little mark. Okay, and I need to be able to line this up all the way across. So that's three and three fourths from the bottom. So I'm going to make um, a couple of more marks out here on the side so that I can draw a line all the way across. Now that will give me a line to set the wooden stamp on. Now I've got that center mark to help me so I need a center mark here as well. So this is two and a half inches so one and a fourth it is. Make a little mark down here that I can see. So there's my center mark. Now I'm going to um, ink this up and then use my guidelines to get this stamped on. All right, I'm just going to line it up. With okay, so there we go. Now, next I need to um, put the panel on. I'm going to go ahead and, let's see, let me check and see how far that line is. It's not quite a fourth of an inch. I have a fourth of an inch border all the way around the panel. So I'm going to go ahead and erase that line. And I am now going to make a box for my panel with a fourth of an inch uh, margin all the way around.
Next I'm going to go ahead and uh, block this off so that I don't stamp in my margin. Okay, now there's a couple of schools of thought on uh, starting a, a, a background or a panel like this where you're using a lot of small stamps, whether you should start in the middle and work your way out or start in a corner and work your way down and in. Um, I know on this panel, I started on this corner right here. I'm not sure that it makes a lot of difference. So um, just do whatever you're comfortable with and I think you'll be fine because it is just so random that I don't think it's going to matter anyway. And there's also another trick to that. Let me share that in just a second here. I'm using a lot of the uh, flower stamps from uh, Bear and Bird by Waffle Flower. There is um, this nice collection of flowers. A little, oops, let me just, I can't see that for the dies. Um, this little group of flowers down here. There's an extra little flower right there that comes in handy for filling in space. And there's also these two hearts that really come in handy um, for filling in little dots. And that's all, or filling in little spaces. And that's also the other trick, is that if you have some other small little uh, flowers or hearts or whatever it may be, that you can fill in empty spaces. So that turns out to be important. Um, on this particular card, now I added hearts and um, carrots just to match this top uh, stamp because it has carrots and this big heart in the middle. So I thought that would be fun to add the addition of those to my mini florals. So I'm also using a carrot from um, McGregor's Garden by Hello Bluebird in, in this particular panel. Um, so I'm going to start with that floral panel and the other trick is to go ahead and if you're going to start in a corner or on the edge or on the side is go ahead and run that stamp off the side. You don't want them to be even all the way down. So putting some off and um, turning the stamp different directions, all of that will help in um, covering your area and not making it like consistent. It needs to look just not haphazard, I guess that's the wrong word, but no really, you don't wanna look at it and see Oh, you know, this is completely straight down. Okay, so since I stamped that with this flower down here, I'm going to turn my stamp a bit and maybe stamp it right in there somewhere, just so it's a little bit different. And I wanna go ahead and ink it up again. Now, you can also go ahead and put this particular stamp all over the panel first and then go in with your other pieces. But what I did is I went ahead and stopped at this point and went ahead and added in some of these cute little carrots. turning them different directions. Okay, and then I'm going to go in and fill in with hearts. Now, the other trick that I might point out is that, look at this panel here, there are extra of these little yellow dots. And I don't have just that particular dot stamp here. So I went back and used that, um, put that back on here, use this, um, or maybe you, can, maybe you can see it better here. Okay, so you see that? Okay, so using this. Okay, um, I had something weird with my, uh, 
recorder going on, so I had to stop just a second. All right, so I was talking about adding in the um, little dots. So let's go back to that. Um, I used the little dot that's on here to make those, and so I needed to cover up all the rest of the stamp to do that, and I knew that I might need to make quite a few dots, so I didn't want to waste a lot of post-it notes or anything like that, tape or anything. So I just used um, some pieces of catalog, and I know that seems probably silly or <laughs> old school or something, but, you know, those catalogs just sit around and I still get them mailed no matter what and I throw away a bunch of them so I might as well put them to use so this covers it up very well I can just go ahead and you know get that little dot covered only and take those off throw them away and continue on my way so that gives me a little dot right there to fill in some space Okay, so I'm going to continue doing that all the way down the panel. And um, then another trick, if you have additional space that needs to be filled in, is to use, um, I used my Copics, so I don't know if you can see here, I added in little orange dots, and also it gave me a little bit more orange than just the carrots. So there's all kinds of things you can do to make the panel really, really full. So, um, let's see, anything else on this card? Um, the um, little tag here is from Lawn Fawn. That is tiny, let's see here, pull that out. It is tiny tag sayings, and there are stamps and dies that go with that set. There's also um, a little border there that is stitched scallop edges from MFT Stamps. Yeah, I might mention the making of the card itself. I did it exactly like I did the panel, um, and, but the difference would be that I cut the paper uh, large enough that it could be folded in half, scored here, the size of the card. I've got a larger um, circle die done the exact same way, run it through, stop it before it continues on to the rest of the circle. And then you'll end up with the arched card that looks like that. Okay. So this card has a smaller floral panel. And the only thing that's different on this one to create this panel. I did it the same way. I marked it off in pencil. I um, used the blue tape to mark it off. Is that it is stamped in um, antique linen distress ink instead of uh, memento black. And just to give it more of a no line uh, coloring look, it's still with Copics. Um, it's a smaller panel. I just thought it would be kind of fun to have a panel for the uh, banner to sit on. This is almost all, oh, it is all, I believe, uh, Bear and Bird from Waffle Flower. And this little border here is, let's see, um, oh, here we go. It is Lacy borders from Lawn Fawn. It makes a really pretty border. Okay, so there's a couple of ideas to make panels for your cards and using your little mini florals. I'm going to have a couple more ideas as well that I'll have up in the next few days. So thank you for being with me and you can always find me at shushupaperart.com.